What is good everyone? Tyler here. Welcome back to another video. One second here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, we've got the breaking news. Welcome to this special report. Vercel announces via tweet the Vercel AI SDK, which helps build AI apps so much faster. They've got flavors for React, for Svelte. I'm sure there's one coming for Vue soon. So you can basically create a chat app like this, like, hello, how are you? And have it stream responses back to you right out of the box. This is so easy to do, just a couple commands. And it's whatever LLM you'd like. You can connect OpenAI, something from Anthropic, an open source one, etc. Let's take a look at a couple of the things that we'll get out of the box here. We're gonna get built-in adapters for OpenAI Lang chain and hugging face. And in the React case, they're hooks so that you can then present the data that's streamed from the language model onto the user. And we're gonna go ahead and build an application, pretty much just gonna lift this stuff. And we'll also use the callbacks to save stuff to a database. And now if you'll recall, many of the first few videos on this channel were basically me trying to mess around with Next.js and Vercel to get stuff streaming, trying to get server-side push events working, et cetera, et cetera. That has become so much more simple now. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I found that the quickest way to get started is to just use one of their templates. And I'm a fan of Next.js and we'll use OpenAI for now. I'm gonna go ahead and use their starter template. Just go ahead and create the sample app. This command, or if you wanna use Yarn or PNPM, whatever your heart desires. Once you got this running, you're gonna go ahead and add your OpenAI key to an environment file so that you can actually make requests to OpenAI. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take a look here on the announcement page. We've got a bit of code that I'm gonna lift and use in our own application to create basically a chat interface. And this will end up being the route, but a lot of the abstraction and the stuff that they've sort of packaged is here, you know, returning the streaming response and basically just making it super simple to get the stuff from the LLM and then push it over to the front end. And then of course, we have to display it and they've given us these very cool hooks that enable real-time dynamic data representation in the app and they're very, very simple to use. So you'd use them like this in React and we're gonna get into this when we, when we do our own application and then just display the messages. And the app will end up looking something like this right out of the box. So I've gone ahead and run NPX create next app create their example app with OpenAI and open it up in VS Code. Let's go check that out. Okay, so really for this very simple example, which is a chatbot, we've got a route, which in the new Next.js folder structure was gonna live under API, chat, and then route. And it's very straightforward. You give your OpenAI key, set that up, set the runtime to edge, although I think it should work on serverless as well. And then you set up your route handler basically. We grab the messages that are sent from the front end and then just make the call to OpenAI. And look at this, after that, they're gonna handle everything with OpenAI Stream, which is something we're importing from their AI package, which is very cool. I mentioned in the intro, how did they get that package name? I mean, that's crazy. MPMI AI is now a Vercel package, which is dope, right? Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the front end. We got that folder structure that came with the new Next.js. And we've got chat, which I think if you use this hook that we're gonna talk about in a second, it defaults to slash chat API route, okay? So we've got a chat page and a chat route. And this is pretty straightforward. You got the hook here. Once again, it comes from the AI slash React package. And we're just displaying the messages. And this is what it's gonna look like on the front end. And again, I haven't changed anything here. This is all right out of the box. Let's just go ahead and say something. Is Tyler What's Good the best YouTube channel on the internet? You better watch out here, ChatGPT. Tyler What's Good may be highly regarded by some individuals, but it depends on personal preferences. Hmm. I don't know. Others may prefer different channels. Who? Who are these people? Name names. GPT-3. Anyway, so, okay, we've done something very straightforward, but another cool feature of this is that you get these stream helpers and callbacks, okay? Which means you can then do things like save prompts to a database and then save the answers to the database as well. So you have messages for, you know, for posterior sake, right? So let's go ahead and implement this into our app. Now I'm gonna use Supabase 
and create two tables, a prompt table and a completions table, which basically saves all the responses and the messages that we type in our chat app. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, everything is pretty much the same, except I've added Superbase and added cre credentials to my environment variables file. And I've created a couple helper functions called save prompt to database and save completion to database, okay? And then I've gone on here and instead of just taking this stream, I'm going to use some of these callbacks here. And in OpenAI stream response, on start, okay, so this callback is called when the stream starts, you can use it to save the prompt to your database. So what I've done here is basically messages is just a list of all the messages that have been sent. So I just want to save the last one for each new message that comes in. And I've done this a couple times. So we're going to go to the database and check this. And then you can do stuff when each token comes in as they come in. I'm just printing them out. And then on completion, you can also save the entirety of the message. Okay the whole, the answer that comes back from OpenAI. So let's go ahead and take a look at that on the database side. So let's go write a message. I'm gonna say, how are you doing? Hey there, how are you doing? And then it's going to answer me and then we're going to check in our database. I'm going to see, and here you can see how it says, hey there, how are you doing? Right, and that's in our prompts. That was the prompt that the user put in and in completions, we should have the answer from the machine. Hello, as an AI, I don't have feelings. Is that what it had said? I believe that's right. So there you go. It has now become so easy to build these apps. You know, it used to take me an hour to wire this stuff up. Now it's just one or two commands, right? Very, very powerful. And one more thing I want to mention before we wrap this up is this SDK.Vercella.AI playground that I hadn't seen before. I've been living under a rock. So you can, or it might be new, I don't know. You can basically compare GPT 3.5 to a hugging face model, and you can basically see the outputs from each and see which one you prefer. So let's go ahead, obviously OpenAI is gonna cost you some money, this open source one may not. So let's see, hey, how are you? Write me a haiku, and then compare the outputs. Worth mentioning. Just thought I'd throw that in there before I end this video. Okay guys, that's it for this one. Just a quick one, because I thought this was very cool and very useful to a lot of people who are just trying to get started. You really don't need to know how to write much code in order to get started with this. Go forth and build. Let me know if you end up using it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.